All right, you guys want to learn how to do smooth and perfect texture on your drywall jobs. Honestly, old construction. Look at this texture right here. Okay, this is like heavy knockdown to hide imperfections in the uh, uh, drywall and tape job. And that's okay, you know, this is how they did it for years and years in the 80s, even into the 90s. Um, remember those old acoustic ceilings, the popcorn ceilings? Hate that stuff. That's a different story, but I'm gonna show you how to fix this, okay? I've already done everything that's really tall in this room. Right here, this is the key. You want good access to the height of your walls. So I have a little bit of scaffolding I got at Sherwin-Williams. Really nice little rolling scaffold I use all the time on my DIY projects. But uh, I'm gonna give you some pro tips on how I do drywall like a pro, even though I never learned from a drywall guy. So I'm interested in the comments below, what would you do different if you are a pro? All right, let me show you what I got. Um, they, they sell plastic or metal pans. I like the metal pan because it's got a nice sharp edge. The plastic pan has an insert of like a little sharp edge that falls out and gets messed up. Also, I like to put a little bit of water in my mud. When I'm going over paint, I like to use all-purpose compound right here. They got all-purpose compound or they got topping compound. I like to use all-purpose compound. Why? My dad taught me this. It has more glue in it, so it's gonna adhere and stick to the walls. I don't ever have a delaminate or flake off. Topping compound, I'm not sure, but I always have used the all-purpose. It's got more glue. All right, I like to have a sponge handy because I'm gonna get a little bit of water. And I've already mixed this, but it needs just a hair more water. But I'll show you how I mix. Now, I just get a little bit. You can always add more water. I'm just gonna add a little bit of water to that because I want it creamy. But if you get it too loose or too creamy, what's gonna happen is it's gonna spill all over the ground and you don't want that. But there's a key on how you, how you trowel it on so you don't make a huge mess. This is also the type of paddle that I like to mix drywall mud, all right? So I'm gonna put it in, start out slow. You're not gonna start whipping it really fast. You'll whip mud and water everywhere. Just gonna start out nice and slow, pick up the pace. I'll go a little bit slower when I grab the edge of the bucket because I don't wanna peel plastic from that bucket and get chunks into the drywall mud. And that's key too, you want clean mud. If you pick up dust and dirt and debris from the ground and trowel it, you're gonna get little chunky monkeys in your wall that are gonna cause you a fit. So I do the bottom where the baseboards are gonna go, I do that very last after the rest of the walls have had a little bit of time to set up. All right, this is the consistency that I like. That's good. I'm gonna whip this a little bit just to get that off. And then I just tappy tap right here. Get the majority of that off. And then I whip it in my water. And then I just set it in the bucket like this. Now if you're gonna do this, you want a bucket at least about halfway full of water. If you don't have water in that bucket, this might pull the bucket over, it's, it's too light. All right, other pro tip, I like to have two pans. Why do I have two pans? Because my son, my helper, my tool man, he's going to get me the next pan ready when I'm ready for the next pan. If I'm up on scaffolding, I don't have to come down and go up, come down and go up. It's nice to have a two-party team on this. All right, another tool that I like, oh, this is what I do with my drywall knife. You don't want to get this wet. You don't want to get this with chunks from the ground on it. So I clean that off and I'll set it in the ladder just like that so that that stays clean. Okay, come over here. This tool right here, it's called a drywall scoop. I love this tool, it's in the contour of a bucket. Okay, that way I can scoop in here and I just get it right out of my bucket and it makes me load my pan really fast. Now, do I load a full pan every time? No, I don't. I go about right there. I don't want it super heavy on me. Now, I, I made a big mess right there, so I'm gonna scoop that up. It's clean, I'm gonna put it right there. We're clean, waste not, want not. I also like to keep, I did a really good job sweeping and blowing this floor out and getting it really clean prior to starting this project. All right, now here's the biggest tip I'm gonna give you. This drywall knife, it's a happy accident that I learned a while back. Okay, if a drywall knife is straight, that's fine, but you tend to put lines on the edges 
of your knife. Now you could sand these corners a little bit to help you, but what's helped me the most is I've bent this knife. I don't know if you can see that, but this corner is bent this way, this corner is bent this way. So when I look down it, the knife is going like this. It's not straight, it's concave, or is it convex? I don't know, I guess it would depend on which way is top and bottom. Okay, so but anyhow, it's, it's an arched trowel. Um, I just bent it with my hands, and what that does is it makes the high point this hump, so when I'm troweling it on the wall, I don't get a bunch of lines. Now remember, if you're just starting this, sanding is your friend. Put it on thin, you can do multiple coats if you want, but have a hammer ready right here. If you have like a, a drywall anchor or a high point in the wall, tap it in and make it a low point and then you can mud over that. Okay, also if you have gloss paint, you wanna degloss it, you wanna sand it a little bit. I just go 220, rough it up a little bit. You could also get TSP, trisodium phosphate, clean the walls, but you could just sand them and wipe them down um, and it's gonna adhere really well, all right? Let's go over to this wall and I'll show you how I try it on. Guys, if you're getting value out of this, leave me a comment. Tell me if you like this type of video or do you like my painting videos better? Let me know in the comments below. All right, you can see this is where I stopped yesterday. And you see these little high points? That's it, that's all you gotta do right there. I'm gonna show you how I cover up this texture. First thing I do when I load my knife, you don't want a bunch of material on the very edges. See how I did that? Especially when you go overhead, okay? If I go overhead and it's right on the edge, as soon as I pull, it's gonna start flopping out. So I'm just gonna get the material on the wall. See how it's, it's right there on the wall? I'm also kind of reducing the weight of my pan. Okay, so I get mud on the wall. And then I'm gonna, now see how I grab the, the trowel here? Instead of putting my finger like this, you're gonna wear that index finger out. A lot of times I grab the trowel like this, and I'm just gonna start covering the wall. Right now I don't really care about the pattern. I just care about it like a, a thin coat on the wall. I don't want too much, but you can't pull it all off. You, you wanna cover that texture. See how I'm kind of going down in an arch? It's just because it's an easy, natural movement. Slap it up, okay, clean my trowel, and then I'm just gonna start pulling it down. I'll come right up here to these edges, just pull over, just cover all that texture. And when you, when you start hearing your trowel straighten the wall, you, you know that you're, you're pulling a lot off, you're getting there, okay? I remember doing this in my very first house that Catherine and I bought years and years ago in Elk Grove, California. It had a really heavy, nasty texture on the wall. And doing, doing this, just this step, I mean, painting a house inside and outside is probably the most bang for your buck you can ever get. It's really gonna freshen up a house, especially if you're selling. But like old texture like this, it, it really dates a house. It looks ugly and this smooth and perfect finish Man, it's, it's like immediate, instant update, gratification, really uh, helps. When I go around these plugs, I pull your plug covers off and then don't touch those screws with your trowel, you get a shocking experience. And then, remember, I can sand too. Anything that's too nasty, too heavy, I can sand. Okay, so I'm starting to get it where all the, and I also do sections. I do a section at a time. I've done where I can now reach it with my, I don't have to be on a scaffold or a ladder, so I work from the top down, okay? That way, the reason I go from the top down is because if I went from the bottom up, it's gonna, any drip is gonna roll down that wall and kind of mess up all the texture I did. If I don't catch it, it'll dry, it's just more sandy. It's not a big deal, but that's why I go from the top down. Okay, so now what I'm gonna do is just start smoothing it out a little bit more. Now, I am leaving lines, I'm aware of that, but that's because I'm getting the texture kind of even. Okay, I'm getting kind of even on this wall. Get rid of any spot that's got heavy, heavy texture. Because I don't need that much mud. But by slapping the mud up there, it allows me to do this much faster than trying to pull it out and smooth out one little trial them out at a time. Okay. 
And you know what? This is honestly, this is art. You know, drywall mud is a medium. And if you look at it as art, the possibilities are endless what you can do with it. Have you seen the videos where people will actually do like landscape situations in the, in the mud? Make trees and animals and that kind of thing? All right, so now I'm gonna just start working my way down. And what I'm gonna do now is because I'm working my way down, I'm putting my pressure at the, at the bottom of this trap. So you'll see a line below, but the line will get fainter at the top. Okay, because I'm, I'm like holding the top of that trowel out from the wall. So like, it, oh wait, let me look at my arch. Oh, I got it backwards, so I need to be like this. And then I'm putting the pressure down here, not at the top. So it'll just hide those lines more and more, the more that I do this. Also, as the mud starts to dry, you can come back and do this again at the right time and really erase all of your lines. Um, so like I could work this section, get it, get it close, and then go back to the section that I was just at. And it'll, uh, it'll, it'll leave my sanding job really easy. Now what I'm doing is I'm just kind of going in an organic pattern uh, so that the human eye doesn't pick up like this was mowed like a lawn, okay? And then I also like to reach, I don't start right here. If I started right there, I put a line right there in the mud. I start beyond where I hit the mud, and then I kind of lift it off like a plane taking off. I don't, I don't immediately bring it off, I gradually bring it off that line. So this is, this is the, the thing that I do in just about every rental that we have. The reason I do this is because if there's ever any damage to the wall, it's so easy to come in, patch the wall. Like for instance, I had an AC unit updated in another unit that I did, and the guy put in the AC stepped through the ceiling, and I had uh, renters come in the next day. So what I did is I just quickly, I got some hot mud, some mud that dries in five minutes. I patched it, and then I, uh, I did this texture, painted it. I got the repair done. Remember that, Willie? Were you there on that helping me? I think so. I got that repair done in like 30 minutes, where normally it'd be, you gotta get your hopper out, you gotta let the texture dry. It can be a pain. I've done it. So this is why I love this texture. It's so easy to fix. But this is, this is almost, almost done, and then I just, like this little chunk right here, this is because I got something in the drywall. So when you when you pull that chunk, it just keeps keeps leaving a mess. So I pull that out. Usually what I do is put it on the corner of my shoe. And then I scrub it off. It's also a reason not to have your floors in. If your floors are already done, mask them, mask them off really good. And then you won't worry about making a mess. Prep is key, man. Prep is, see that? There's a chunk right there. See the little comment it makes? So I just scoop that off, put it on the shoe, wipe it off. All right. See these little bumps right here in the finish, these little air, air bubbles? This is due to a few factors. What I found is depending on the time of the day, those bubbles will come or they won't. Also, depending on if you're going over some drywall mud that's fresh or done yesterday, it's still kind of off-gassing. It's letting the air out. So what I do is I, I let it start to set up and I'll come back and I'll just trowel over that and it starts to hide them. And then when I sand, they come off immediately. So if you see that, don't trip. And if you have a line that you just keep hitting, like a lot of times right here at a corner, it's gonna be messy. Okay, you're not going to be able to get it perfect. Like you're gonna, you're gonna try to mud this, and for some reason it just never gets to the quality you're hoping for. That's what sanding is for. Okay, you can easily just sand that out. Drywall mud is made to be sanded pretty easily. Right here, get this chunk out. 
Now, I got it maybe a little bit too loose when I put that much water in it, but not much. I mean, I didn't spill very much. If you're spilling all over the place, it's because your pan, your, your pan is too loose. It's, it's too, uh, too watery. Also, you're not scraping your corners in your trout. So you can start to see how, how this looks, man. It, 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 looks, it looks really cool. And honestly, I don't try to put a bunch of texture in it. You're naturally going to get some texture. I don't care how good you are with the trowel, that, that if you wanted it perfectly smooth, you would just have to sand out like a madman. But I like it with a little bit of texture in it anyways. And then when you sand that texture, it just looks like Venetian plaster when you're done. This, this right here wouldn't be a problem. I could sand that out, but I'm just going to... You can notice, I start down here. I start down here, and I work my way up. That's also why when I did the top, I went all the way around with my scaffolding, and, I, and, and that dried overnight. And then when I came back today, I can, I can start here above it and bring my trowel down without putting a bunch of marks in it. That's how you do smooth and perfect texture. Guys, check out the floor that we finished. We did a lot in this room. We got the floor completely done. We did all brand new baseboards. We did all the walls with new texture and new paint. We painted it a nice ocean bright blue to match the ocean out here because you get this just epic view. So the wall color goes with the sky and the water out there. And you got the ocean front pool right there. And then uh, we cleaned up all the Koa woodwork. Instead of changing those out because I couldn't find this size, I painted them black to hide any age to them. And I think they look kind of sharp. It goes cool with our new fan. We got like a palm leaf fan, uh, new track lights up there, new track light there. We reused the old bamboo shades, which I think look a lot better with this wall color. I really, I really kind of dig that they're, uh, they're also, you know, they're kind of retro 80s but the bamboo totally goes, man. So, and they're blackout shades. So we saved those, what do you think? We repainted all of the trim. Um, boy, that's a pain to mask all that off too, but we painted that. Uh, the floors are awesome. We got a floor muffler underneath it, so it's nice and quiet to walk on. We refinished uh, these doors here to the laundry room, added a new light in the laundry room. Uh, next thing we're gonna do is this disaster of a kitchen. That old fluorescent light's gotta go. We're gonna do new cans, pendant lights, and see what else we're gonna do in here. But we're gonna update this thing. I also switched out all the switches and plugs uh, to nice bright white instead of the baby poop yellow. All right, let me know what you guys think. Not bad for five days of work, huh? Pretty good job. Super good boys I got working with me. Thanks Willie, thanks Brad, thanks Bubba. Hope you enjoyed that tutorial. Share this video with your friends and show me what walls you're gonna fix. I wanna see pictures of your nasty texture below and I want you to comment you're gonna fix it. Until next time from Mike Quist, remember, you got this. Visit me anytime at MikeQuist.com. I'm gonna be doing tutorials on DIY artistry like a pro. Now you know, I hope you enjoyed the video.